Police officers have maintained on guard at the offices of the two media houses, the Daily Monitor and the Red Paper, as the media siege goes into day two. KFM and Dembe FM also remain off air. The police raid on these media houses stems from the failure by the Daily Monitor to reveal the source of the letter authored by the coordinator of security agencies, General David Sejusa. Police also insists that investigations into the matter are legal after they secured a court order. The police raid has attracted condemnation from different quarters with observers questioning the future of Uganda's media freedom. Peter Mwesige, a media expert and consultant, has described the raid as an attack on Uganda's fourth estate. They are trying to intimidate not just the monitor and the red paper, KFM and Dembe FM, which are now all off. They are trying to intimidate the media that, you know what, there is a price to pay if you engage in critical coverage, or critical reporting. There's a price to pay if you give a platform for debate that questions the way this country is governed. That is the message they're trying to send, I think, and that must be condemned because without free comments, without uh, critical reporting on the affairs of government, there is no democracy for us to speak about. Mwesige also described the demand by the police compelling the media houses to reveal their source as unfortunate. You know, in my view, I call that a slippery road to hell. There is a reason why in very many jurisdictions, journalists don't easily, you know, uh, reveal their sources. You just think about it. If it was that easy, for journalists to reveal their sources. Would we have any investigative journalism in this country? Legal expert Ladislas Rakafuzi takes issue with the Nakawa magistrate who issued the court order. The, the, the magistrate who gave the order gave it in error because the source of information had already been disclosed in the newspaper itself because the letter had been published in full with the signatures. So that was sufficient enough. So looking for the document, there was no basis upon, upon them to look for that document. Rakafuzi says that the clampdown on media houses was illegal. You, you see, the court order to search premises did not include closing premises. Searching and closing premises are two different things. They never had a court order to close premises. All they had was, the order they had was to search premises for this letter. Meanwhile, the National Association of Broadcasters has released a statement on the closure of the media houses. The body is demanding that the operation of their members be allowed to continue forthwith. The association also raises three questions, including should the operations of the radio station be stopped or closed because of a search of a document which is not requisite for proof for an offending publication? Should transmission equipment be turned off in search for a document? Should operation of a business be stopped because of an alleged crime committed by another person? The international community has also not taken the police raid on the media lightly. The U.S. Embassy in Uganda on its website states that these disruptions, no matter the justification offered, nevertheless risk having a chilling effect on the freedoms of expression and speech enshrined in the Ugandan constitution. But as the clampdown continues, the media houses are starting to feel the financial pinch, summed in millions. Solomon Serwanja, NTV.